So, I had an interesting uh, day and conversation earlier with John Zerzan. And uh, for those of you who don't know, he is a very well-noted um, anarcho-primitivist thinker, uh, philosopher. He's been around, yo, um, for a long fucking time. And he's, you know, he has a lot of experience. I respect him significantly. Um, and let's just say I, I got, uh, I got, you know, a weirdly positive and improved mood from the comment that I have the energy we need. Um, so I'm going to see if I can get, uh, him on some more programs, especially since for those of you who also, uh, haven't been following for a bit, basically I, uh, I'm going to be making a significant amount of podcast episodes for Agoras Nexus and also going to be co-hosting with uh with Daggerist um as well for a couple of those episodes a month and he's going to be doing some of his own solo stuff. Basically we're taking over the uh the uh host and co-host kind of arrangement for now. And, uh, and, uh, we'll also be accepting episodes from Brandon, uh, for, like, whenever you can get, like, two internet, because basically he's just got to wait for the musknet to hit his area, because it's been, like, put on delay for exactly no good reason. Um, you know, I don't like Elon Musk, I don't want his internet to work, but for some people, it does need to work, you know, because he fucking promised and they paid for it if I understand correctly. Fuck Elon Musk. Anyway, um, the point is that uh, for those of you who have been following me for a significant period of time, you know uh, I have some significant uh, anti-tech slash anti-civ sort of mentalities. And uh, I've been speaking about this for a significant time. And I've been reading and and listening to people like John for a significant period of time. And it's fucking insane that I got to talk to him finally. And I'm willing to talk to pretty much like anyone in these circles, right? You know, if you want if you want me to talk to you as well, feel free. And also if you want to be on the Agorist Nexus podcast, hit me up because I'm taking booking requests as of now. But basically, the vibe is gonna be like you know, if you watch the full interview, um, like, the fundamental problems uh, aren't going to be solved overnight, and there are in incremental approaches that we can take uh, to start to solve the problem now. But um, y'all know I'm a pessimist and a cynic, so it's, it's not going to be solved overnight and in my pessimistic cynical modus i think we're all going to end in a brutal apocalypse you know bloody armageddon uh, of uh, rivers of blood and years of darkness likes which will make revelation look like a children's story you know my normal spiel but it was refreshing to talk to somebody who had uh what i believe to be like the right perspective about a fucking lot of things and also um like i got another opportunity uh, to be on this guy's show. If you want me on your show, feel free to hit me up. Um, <laughs> I had people joking, though, that I'm on another watch list. So, yeah, just add another to the pile. Uh, the point is that, like, you know, uh, this was a very productive conversation. And uh, there's a lot of information in there. I'm going to extract a clip that I think represents it well. Uh, but it's by no means the whole thing, and there was a lot discussed. So, like, there's there's room for more, to say the the least. And I plan to email him and get him, uh, like, in front of more eyes and ears, to put it mildly. And also, of course, to get more content for y'all, because um, those of you who've been throwing money at my, like, Patreon and Kofi, you're keeping me going. Um... That's what I need. I need to, to work my ass off, so I do plan on doing it. But uh, it, was, it was a very productive discussion. Um, so I'm going to start it um, with uh, an exchange between Kareem and uh, John, and it's going to end with uh, an exchange between John and myself. 
So, yeah, there's going to be a lot more where that came from, just to say the least. Um, yeah, enjoy and uh, smash the fucking state. I think there's an aspect to say, okay, there's some property that I built or I acquired or I traded for that can be my own. Um, and then that's, uh, that's the start of it. But, but here's that's where words come from. We've got to have trade, we've got to protect the trade, therefore, we have to have armies. And you know, the whole thing is a, is a disease spiral that just goes mm -hmm. on and on. What if there was no private property when we were hunter gatherers living in face to face, you know, decentralized community th that didn't exist? People like that didn't didn't even have a notion of private property. Yeah. I own this. Actually, here's oh, what I'd say, John. That's Here, that's a sickness. Okay. Here's actually what I'd say. If there's no overall state, like if there's no overall neural link guys, if there's no globalists, if even if there's no nationalists, like we we clean the slate of those guys, which to me they're failing on their own. They're pulling their own things and and I know people would say, why are you again? I mean, there's people in California that don't like people in Texas. And I, I, I know people in Texas who would say, I'd rather work with someone from Mexico than that. So nationalism to me even is failing. I would say this. If there's a decentralized society, I can. I think it's feasible for me to say, okay, I'm going to try my private property and trade and, and technology that is going to be used for decentralized means for social cooperation. Other people like um, my co-host Jeremiah can try more of an agorist lifestyle. I have friends who can try maybe a syndicalist lifestyle. And, are, and then there be people who say like, no, I don't want any of that. And we, I do want to have hunter-gatherer societies and say I honor that decision. And even though maybe I wouldn't personally want to like that, that's to me even another reason I brought you on here is because we do differ on that. But I think we can still build coalitions of people like-minded stuff. And it kind of pisses me off that there's people like Noam Chomsky who say, oh, I'm a syndicalist on this. Uh, get your get your medical procedure that the establishment wants you to take, which you can kind of tell what I mean by that, hopefully. And then um, do this and do that that the state wants to do. But, oh, and caps can't work. Anarcho-primitivism can't work. So that I don't like. But I can actually come outside of the bend and say, hey, I think there's actually... A lot of benefits to hunter gatherer. You're not domesticating animals. There's less parasites. There's no microplastics. There's clean water. There's good food. You have actual communication. You're connecting with your ancestors. You're probably learning how to meditate in specific societies. And you probably don't have a lot of tooth decay or other issues. And you don't have any debt disease, um, specific diseases and stuff like that. There are disadvantages to, I think, everything. But yeah, that's what I'd say. I wouldn't say it's necessarily a clean thing. And I'm glad you kind of brought that up, that there is fundamental differences. Because um, I've read your book, Running on Emptiness, you know, parts of it. And I'm, I'm going through that, and I am really enjoying it. And I also enjoy Murray Rothbard as well. Um, I, I'm more on Murray Rothbard and, and seeing what to do there. But I, I definitely think you have very good criticisms of modern consumerism and modern technology, especially how these technocrats are using it. So hopefully that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Well, we can we can fight it out in a non-abusive way. I think. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's it's the choice about what to do with the technology. You know, I think one thing to add is that it isn't a given. I mean, where does any of the technology come from, really? It depends. And here's where the left uh, has no answer whatsoever. They want to they want to preserve all the technological uh, systems and everything, but. That means, and a friend of mine in Detroit always used to say this, he, he would be arguing with those types and he'd say, oh, does that mean you want to go down in the mine? And the, the leftists would go, what? Oh, what? And, and he, he, he said, I wouldn't go down in the mine unless there was a gun at my head. And of course, there is an economic gun at a lot of people's heads. That's why they're stuck in the mines. But somebody's, some millions of people have got to be doing the mining and the assembly line and the warehousing and the driving and the, all that stuff so you can have the nice shiny technology. Otherwise, it doesn't exist. So who's going to yeah. do it? I don't well, want to. I don't children, want to obviously. People yeah, that's the, um, being down in the mine, not for a second. So, yeah. so screw it. Yeah, me and uh, Jeremiah were talking about that. I was making like a joke like these environmentalists or, you know, they get Greta or whoever. And they say, we want green cars. We want this. We want green everything. We green, green, which is funny because that, that's all their thing. Everything comes back to climate change. Why didn't 
you know, I win the lottery. Oh, it must be climate change. Why didn't, you know, my internet work? Why did we get confused on times? It's cl climate change to me. It went from like Trump to Putin to climate change. Like, what do I blame everything on? Spin the wheel. Climate change. And to me, th there were cars that, 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 you know, if I'm not going to go too crazy on the conspiracy stuff, but that run on air and run on water, they didn't want that. So to me, yeah, there are people who want to go down in the mines and mine lithium, which destroys whole mountains. And yeah, people don't yeah, get that. It's just, I'm not it's saying new fossil extractivism. Fuel. It's always yeah. been a matter of extractivism, and now it's and now they're running out of stuff to extract, and they're calling it green and sustainable, which it isn't. Yeah, and and and, I've, and I'll argue that, that point is is correct to a certain thing. Now, fossil fuels. I'm not going to say, oh, there's no environmental effects. We could do that. I'm not necessarily against nuclear energy. I'm more of the, if you really push me, I'm more on the, like, let's see what Tesla's technology is doing, because I know it works in Niagara Falls, and I'd like to see the natural powers of the earth power the planet. I know people are going to, I know Jeremiah probably doesn't agree with me there, but I think we should look at Nikola Tesla's technology see, if we're going to do that. Well, why, do we, why do we want to keep all this stuff running? Yeah. I mean, if it's a bad idea in the first place, why is the question, how do we come up with the energy, the right kind of energy? Well, the energy for what? To keep this whole madness running? You can see where it's going. And even if you made it a little more green, it would still be a disaster. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. know we're, we're going to space. Going to space. Yeah, the moon landing. Space, right. uh, here's space. what I'd say. Madness. The disaster is... Yes, technology is part, like, it's not neutral. There's some issues. I have some big issues with AI and how it's being used and the metaverse. But I will say this. When it comes to energy, that is, that's the one thing if somebody controls centrally, they control. It's not currency even to me. The Federal Reserve is a problem, but it's it's energy. If you can control, control energy, you control the movement fundamentally of people, and where they go and what they do. So I'm saying the reason Tesla is so profound in energy is to actually get away from the system by saying, hey, the world is actually wireless before it was wired. And we can solve a lot of these problems by actually going to something that is that completely non-technological? No, but I think it's taking it one step further where, OK, General Electric's not controlling everything. Nuclear, even we can say, fine, I don't necessarily even need to look at nuclear power plants or fossil fuels. We can. And I think those are better alternatives than lithium and destroying a whole mountain. But I'm trying to find the best alternative. And I do believe that is tesla's that's where i'd stand is tesla's technology i'm not against using a little bit of technology if it's decentralized and it's going to help people live a little better life but i am but again you know you you've you've glossed over the question where does it where does it come from you can we can talk about the control of it and which way to go with it but again it doesn't exist without the enslavement of many many most of the people and the systematic destruction of natural world. It, it just, it seems to be the simple fact, you know, it's, yeah. where does it come from? Again, the people, where does, I mean, where does otherwise Tesla... you have to say, I'm fine with all of that suffering, those stunted lives that mm -hmm. where people have to slave away to, to exist, to, you know, to eat. What kind of world is that? That's the basis of your mass society. That's wrong. Well, yeah, if you're enslaving people in any mass society, I think that's completely wrong. Um, why I'm opting for Tesla stuff is my understanding it comes directly from the Earth. Now, Jeremiah, you can feel free to step in and correct me at any time because I'm not a physicist. I'm not um, an, an energy expert by any means. That's why I'm saying that one is legit because it comes straight from the Earth. Other than, you know, aside from lithium, even nuclear energy, which is... Um, my choice or uh if you have to fossil fuels but i think there is a problem that fossil fuels will run out so that's not a complete fix and and that's an issue so fossil fuels won't run out they won't we'll we'll no we'll, we'll cook ourselves in the planet and kill everything on it uh by pulling all this uh plastic petroleum and all that shit out of the earth uh toxic runoff uh, killing every tribe that doesn't conform to state capitalism and then blocking lawsuits like Chevron and, you know, Exxon Mobil did, you know, Texaco, what, like you, the, the fundamental industry 
is the problem. And one of the problems with that fundamental industry is its centralized nature. You're not going to get any better freedom levels because you tell like, yeah, I, I have a central power plant that runs off Tesla technology now rather than a central power plant that runs off, uh, you know, coal or, you know, uh, uh, like hydropower. The problem is that it's central power to power a fundamentally wrong system mm -hmm. and that this centralization is fundamentally disconnecting and enslaving us. So, you know, I don't see any benefit to, to saying, hey, t I mean, Tesla had a, had a radically better future planned than the elites do. Everything's relative, everything's on a scale, but better mm -hmm. doesn't mean good. You know, I would rather be punched in the face than raped. It doesn't mean I love the idea of being punched in the face. Okay. Um, then I guess I, I throw the question because maybe, I, you know, discrepancies. Um, I do thank you, John, for like, you know, bringing up some of the uh, differences that we might have. But uh, where would you go on the energy thing then, Jeremiah? What do you think? I mean, if you want energy, just use as minimal a level of energy as you can. Mm -hmm. um, and then... Uh, produce what energy you do get on your own. Um, and that can be scaled to any level, which means that if you wanted to, you could use zero power from zero plants and, you know, not need any plants to produce the power. Um, and that also means that if you use barely any power, um, you could just install a turbine. You could do, you know, anything you wanted with your property if the state wasn't in your way telling you we're going to raid you now because you're too self-sustaining. That's the real problem is that the system is self-perpetuating and will not let itself die. Well, centralization is certainly a, a problem, but, uh, but it's a malignancy. And But what if everybody, I mean, if you want a certain level of technology, if it were decentralized, what about everybody has their own oil refinery or their own reactor? I mean, that's not going. That's not a solution. I mean, right? It, yeah. It's not. It's. It wouldn't even be practical on on really any level we could imagine, I suppose. But so it isn't just the central evil, but you know, it's 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 the basis of, of right technological mass society. Yeah, well, yeah, it, and also like you know, that's just going to speed up the cooking, people. People have to get into an anarchist mindset in order to think from an anarchist perspective. And a lot of people won't do that because, you know, why bother? You know, it's it's like, I don't know if you're familiar with Fatboy Slim, but uh, he's a British uh, e electronic musician. And he's got a, a an album cover with this fat guy sitting on a bench and it says, or walking through a city and it says, I'm number one, so why try harder? And I think that's what a lot of people think. They think, I'm already here. Everything's already easy. I have no incentive to do jack shit else. So let's not do anything else. And so I think that's like a key part of the problem is that convenience has created a society that doesn't want inconvenience. Like I get told I'm uncomfortable an alarming amount these days. Like fuck your comfort. If I'm right, shut the fuck up and accept it. Yeah, that's but that's the reality, isn't it? I mean, and we're having this conversation. We're all comfortable, you know. I mean, it's it's the the whole problem is still there. But I mean, we're still we're okay. I mean, I'm I'm not freezing or the you know or whatnot. But you know, so I mean, it's a little unreal. I mean, we we got to admit it. We we were all part of the deal. You know, we're part of the deal right now, and it's hard to to imagine. Uh, rewilding or de-domesticating or any of that kind of stuff because look, you know, we're even as bad as it's getting, we're still kind of okay.